Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation from our beautiful Palo Alto studios. And today we're here with Clint Wyckoff, who's a global, senior global solutions engineer from Datrium. Welcome to theCUBE, Clint. Well, thanks for having us, Peter. It's great to be here. So Clint, there's a lot of things that we could talk about, but specifically some of the things that we want to talk about today relate to how uh, cloud use as it becomes more broad-based is now becoming more complex. Concerns about as we use more cloud, we still have off-premise, how do we then sustain how that uh, we get more work done? And the crucial role that automation and human beings are still going to play as we try to achieve our overall goals with data. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of these themes of simplicity, scalability, and reliability. Yeah, definitely, Peter. You know, it's been a very interesting time over the last 12 months here at Daytream. You know, we've been on a rapid release cycle. Um, we've actually released DVX 4.0 of our software just a few weeks ago, and maintaining focus around those three key talking points of simplicity, scalability, and reliability. That's really what the Daytream DVX platform is all about. And it's about solving customer challenges that they have with their traditional on-premises workloads that they virtualized. And we're also seeing an increase in customers trying to leverage the public cloud for several different use cases. So kind of the, the biggest takeaway from, from our perspective with relation to the latest release of our software is, you know, how can we integrate what the customers have grown to love on premises with their Datrium DVX platform and how can we integrate that into the public cloud? So our first endeavor into that area is with what Cloud DVX and that integrates directly into their existing AWS um, subscription that they have. So now that they have on-premises Datrium running for all their mission critical, providing tier one systems uh, of all the performance, cloud backup, all those capabilities that they've grown to love, but how can I get my data offsite? That's been a huge challenge for customers. How can I get my data offsite in an efficient fashion? But in a way that doesn't look like a, an entirely different new or uh, a completely independent set of activities associated with AWS. So talk to us a little bit about, you said something interesting, you said, it integrates directly into AWS. What does that mean? Yeah, so we've taken a direct port of our software. So we have on-premises customers run ESX hosts, okay? In AWS terms, that translates into EC2 instances. So the first thing that we do is we instantiate an EC2 instance outside in an AWS subscription, okay? That means my billing, is in, my, billing my management, my console, everything now is the same. Exactly, right? And then we're utilizing an S3 uh, bucket to hold our cloud archive. So the first use case for cloud DVX in its current iteration is for offsite archives uh, of Datrium snapshots, right? I run VMs on premises, I want to take a snapshot of these, maybe send them over to a secondary location, and then I want to get those offsite for more long-term archival purposes. S3 is a great target for that, um, and that's exactly what we're doing. So an existing customer can go into their Datrium console, say I want to add my AWS subscription, click next, 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 finish, and it's literally that easy. We have automated uh, Lambda functions with that automatically spin up the necessary EC2 instances, S3 buckets, all that stuff for the customer, so we, they completely simplify the entire process. You know, I like to think of it almost like, you know, if you look at your iPhone and you go into your iCloud backup, there's literally just a little slider button that says turn it on. For us, it's literally that simple as well. How can we help customers get their data offsite efficiently? Okay, now that's a key kind of point for us here at Daytream and the fact that we have a global deduplication pool. That means the only data that's ever going to go over the wire is truly unique. So we have built in blockchain type crypto hashing that goes on. So as data comes in, we're going to do a comparison on prem, off prem, and only send the unique data over the wire. That is truly game changing from a customer perspective. That means I can now decrease my RPOs. I can get my data offsite faster, but then whenever I want to recover or retrieve those block or those virtual machine snapshots, it's efficient as well. So it's both ingress and egress. So from a customer perspective, it's a win-win. I can get my data offsite fast and I can get it fat back fast as well. And it ultimately decreases their AWS charges as well. That's my, the point I was going to make, but it's within the envelope of how they want to manage their AWS resources, right? Yep. So this doesn't, this is not something that's going to come along and, and just blow up how you spend AWS. If you're the AWS person, so we've heard what, what the Daytream console person can mm -hmm. do. If you're an AWS person, you're now seeing an application that has certain uh, characteristics, performance characteristics associated with it, cost characteristics associated with it, and now you're seeing what you need to see. Exactly. Yeah, we kind of abstract the AWS 
components out of it. So, you know, if I'm in AW, if I'm in the AWS console, yes, I see my EC2 instance. Yes, I see an S3 bucket, but you can't make heads or tails of what it's kind of doing. You don't need to worry about all that stuff. We manage everything solely from a Datrium perspective. Going back to that simplicity model that the product was built upon is how can we make this as simple as possible, right? It's so simple that even, you know, an admin that has no experience with AWS can go in and stand this up very, very easily. All right, so you've got some great things going on with being able to use cloud as a target. Mm -hmm. What about being able to orchestrate resources across multiple different potential resources? Uh, how is that started? How, how does some of the new tooling uh, facilitate that or make it more difficult? Well, that's a, that's a really great question, Peter, but it's almost like you're looking into the, the crystal ball of the future because you know, the way that Datrium um, you know, the, the product itself and the platform is architect, architected, you know, it's kind of building blocks on top of each other. We started off on-premises. Um, we've built that out to, you know, have a scale-out architecture. Now we're going off-premises out to the public cloud. Uh, like I said, the first use case being uh, just being able to, to leverage that for cloud archives. But what if I want to orchestrate that and bring workloads up inside of AWS? I have a VMware snapshot that I've sent, or a, a, a Datrium snapshot that I've sent off-prem. I want to now make that an EC2 instance, or I want to orchestrate that. That's the direction that we're going. So there's definitely more to come there. Um, so that's kind of the, the direction and what the, the platform is capable of. This is just the, the, just the beginning. Now the hyperconverged concept is very powerful and is likely going to be a major feature of being able to put the work where it needs to be put based on where the data needs it. Sure. Uh, but Hyperconverged has had you know, some successes, it's had some weirdness associated with it. We won't get into all of it, but the basic notion of Hyperconverged is that you can bring resources together and run them as a single unit. But it still tends to be more of a resource focus. Mm -hmm. You guys are looking at this from slightly differently. You're saying, let, let's look at this as a problem of data mm -hmm. and how the data is going to need resources so that you're not managing in the context of resources that are converged, you're managing in the context of the, of the resources that the data needs to do what it needs to do for the business. So I got that right? Yeah, I mean, Hyperconverged has done uh, a lot of really good things. Um, first and foremost, it's moved Flash to the host level, right? We're removing a lot of the latency problems that traditional SAN architecture has. Um, we apply many of those same concepts to what Datrium is, but we also bring a lot of what uh, traditional SAN has as well, being durability, reliability on the backside of it. So we're basically separating out my performance tier from my durability capacity tier on the bottom. So Based on what the data needs. Exactly, right. So now that I've got these individual stateless compute hosts where all of my performance is for ultra low latency, um, you know, latency is a killer of any, prod of any project. Uh, most notably like VDI for instance, or even SQL Server or Oracle. Uh, you know, one of the other capabilities we actually just added to the product as well is now full support for Oracle Rack running on Datrium um, in a virtualized instance. So. Latency, as I mentioned, has been a killer, especially for mission critical applications. For us, we're enabling you know, customers to be able to virtualize more and more high performance applications and rely on the Datrium platform to have the intelligence and simplicity behind the scenes to make sure that things are going to run the way that they need to. Now, as you think about what that means to an organization, so you've, you know, you've been at Datrium for a while now, and you, uh, how are companies actually uh, facilitating the process of doing this differently. Uh, are they starting to, are they doing a better job of actually converging the way that the work is applied to these resources? Or is that something that's still becoming difficult? How is the simplicity and the automation and the reliability making it easier for customers to actually realize value out of tools like this? Oh, it's actually, it's, it's truly amazing because once our customers get you know, a, a, a feel for Datrium and get it into their environment. I mean, we have customers all across the world from Fortune 500 customers down to, you know, more small, medium-sized businesses, financial, legal, all across the, the entire spectrum of, of, of verticals that are benefiting from the simplicity model, right? I don't have to worry about, you can go out to the Datrium website and we have a whole list of customer testimonials. And the one kind of resounding theme that goes across that is, I no longer have to worry about managing this, this, this storage, the infrastructure. I'm now able to go back to my CIO or my CEO and I can provide business value to the business. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I don't have to worry about managing knobs and dials and hmm, do I want to turn compression on 
or maybe I want to turn it off, or what size volume do I need, what cue depth, that, that, that's kind of mundane tasks. Let's focus on simplicity. Things are going to run the way that you need them to do, uh, the, the way that you need them to run, they're going to be fast, and it's going to be simple to operate. Well, we at Wikibon, we like to talk about the difference between business and digital business mm -hmm. is data. Yes. That a digital business treats its data as an asset, and that has enormous implications. How you think about how your work is institutionalized, uh, what resources you buy, how you think about investing. Now, it sounds as though you guys are thinking similarly. It's not the simple tasks you perform on the data that becomes important. It's the role the data plays in your business and how you turn that into a service for the business. Is that accurate? That is very accurate. And uh, you know, you you brought up a really good point there. And the fact that the data is the business that is a very key foundational component that we continue to build upon inside the product. So one of the kind of big capabilities, and you've seen a lot of this in today's day and age with ransomware hacks and um, data breaches. I mean, it's almost every other week you go on CNN or pick your favorite news channel that you cheer, <laughs> that you care to watch, and you, see, you hear of breaches or data being stolen. So encryption, compliancy, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, all that type of stuff is very important. And we've actually built into the product um, what we call blanket encryption. So data, as it comes inbound, is, uh, is encrypted. Uh, we use FIPS 140-2, either validated or approved mode, and it is encrypted across the entire stack. In use, over the wire in flight and at rest. That's very different than the way that some of the other more traditional folks out there do it, right? If I look at a SAN, it does encryption at rest. Well, that's great, but what if, well, the data's in flight. What if I want to send it off-premises out to the public cloud? With Datrium, all that is built into the product. And that's presumably because Datrium has a greater visibility into the multiple levers, uh, levels that the data is being utilized, Absolutely. And which is why you can apply in that way. And so, literally, data becomes a service that applications and people call out of some Datrium managed store. They're absolutely, yep. So think about what's next. If we think about the, uh, you mentioned, for example, that when we had arrays with, uh, with uh, uh, SANS, mm -hmm. that we had a certain architectural approach to how we did things. But as we move to a world where we can literally look at data as an asset, and we start thinking not on not as you know the task you perform in the data, but the the way you generate value out of your data. Mm -hmm. What types of things, not just at Datrium, but what mm -hmm. types of things, what types of challenges is the industry going to take on next? So, that's an interesting question. So, in my opinion, this is Clint's personal opinion. The the way that the industry is changing, and in, in regular administrators, they're trying to orchestrate as much as they possibly can, right? I don't want to have to worry about the, the low hanging fruit on the tree. How can I automate things so that whenever something happens or an action happens or an admi uh, a developer needs a virtual machine or I want to send this off site to DR, what if I can orchestrate that, automate it, make it as simple to consume because traditionally IT is a bottleneck for moving the business forward. I need to go out and procure hardware and network switches, all the type of stuff that go along with it. So what if, I was able to orchestrate all of those components, leveraging API calls back to my infrastructure. And so like a, a, a user has a, a web form that they go in and fill out. You know, those challenges are the types of things that organizations, in my opinion, are looking to, to overcome. Now, I want to build on that for a second because uh, a lot of folks immediately then go to, oh, so we're going to use technology to replace labor. And while some of that may happen, uh, the way I look at it, and the way we look at it, is the real advantage is that new workloads are coming at these yep. guys at an unprecedented rate. And so it's not so much about getting rid of people, there may be an element of that, but it's allowing people to be able to perform more work well, with these new technologies. More work, but focus on what you should be focusing on. Uh, of all the, the senior executives that but I- That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, all the senior executives that I talk to, they're looking to make better use of IT resources. Those IT resources are not only what's running in the racks in the data center, but it's also the gentleman or the, the lady sitting behind the keyboard. What if I want to make better use of their intellectual property that they have to provide value back to the business, okay? And that's, that's what I see with pretty much everybody that I talk to. Clint, this has been a great conversation. Uh, so once again, this has been Clint Wyckoff. This has been a CUBE conversation with Clint Wyckoff, who's a senior global solutions engineer at Datrium. Clint, thank you very much for being on theCUBE, and we'll talk again. All right, thanks, Peter. Once again, thanks very much for sitting in on this CUBE conversation, and we'll talk to you again soon.